Greetings, welcome to Learn to Burn Studios. My name's Eric Stevenson. In today's video, we're gonna continue our conversation on how to sprue a wax skull for lost wax casting in ceramic shell. In the previous video, we talked about the components that go into a typical sprue system, cups, gates, vents, the type of wax, and different approaches and theory that go into a typical sprue system. But now we need to actually apply those to this actual pattern. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, so now, as we move forward, we have all our different components. We have our wax cup, we have our gates. In this case, I'm using a pre-extruded wax that's specifically meant for sprueing. It has a slightly lower melting point, and so it's gonna evacuate a little bit faster than the patterns. The styrofoam cup is gonna evacuate as quick as possible, it's gonna just vaporize. Then with the sprue wax, it's going to go to a liquid faster than the pattern wax and escaping the, the investment. And that ultimately is leaving us a clear path for our pattern wax to, to evacuate evenly and, and quickly. Because we do wanna remember as everything is heating up and going to a molten state that is expanding and we don't wanna crack our shells. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna use a propane torch and uh, Ultimately, a couple different things. It's like when I'm attach, welding something directly to my pattern, I always prefer to use a metal tool, and whether that be a, a dental tool or a small sculpting tool. In this case, this is the tool I'm using. It has kind of a heavier end, which I like to use, and I'll use this one more for chasing. So we'll set this off to the side. And then ultimately I'll also use an electric soldering iron when I'm welding gate to gate or a gate to cup. And so like, as I've mentioned before, the wax likes to absorb heat very easily and, and really holds on to it a little bit longer than we really would desire. So you need to be careful on how often and how quickly you add um, heat to your wax pattern or, or specifically in this situation, your gating system. If you try to do it everything too quickly, ultimately as that heat saturates into your piece, your sprue system and or your pattern is gonna to start to deform and ultimately break and, and it's gonna generate probably 90% of the frustration that people have with sprueing comes from trying to do too much too quickly. We're gonna shoot for about a four, four and a half inch chunk of gate. And I'm gonna, in this situation, I'm gonna use the three quarter inch A lot of times your gates with, uh, in standard investment or, or, or more specifically with sand casting, have to be considerably larger because the metal you're, pour, you're pouring the metal into a cold material. And so that right off, right off the bat, it's taking heat from the metal. With a ceramic shell, the ceramic shell is actually gonna be hot. And so depending on the pattern, you know, in this situation for these will probably be about 800 degrees or so. So it's, the, it's gonna take very little heat from the metal as it flows into the pattern. So, which means I can get away with a, a, a smaller gate. And so what we're gonna do is, you know, we've already kind of pre-thickened up this back area. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna, you know, start warming up the wax. And so one of the things about welding waxes is that, or welding, welding in general, wax or metal, you wanna evenly heat both parts that you're trying to weld together. And so instead of just heating this up and making it all wet and sloppy and stuff and just jamming it on, that's gonna make a really weak connection. So I'm gonna you know, heat it up a couple of times, letting that heat absorb into this piece. I'm also gonna heat up this, but given that this is my pattern, I don't wanna just jump right on top and hit the torch with it. It's a little too uncontrolled. So I'm gonna grab my, my electric soldering iron, just kind of soften that up and let that heat absorb into the pattern. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit more. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow me to, as I press into it, it's gonna deform the sprue wax a little bit. It's gonna increase my surface area and give me a, 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 at least an initial kind of a, a tack. And so, that, you know, it's not gonna move around on me. And so now I can go, and go in and weld. And so in th this situation, since we're going to from gate to pattern, I heat up my tool. 
And I'm gonna go in kind of on a diagonal, heating, melting an even amount of material. And by holding on, if possible, on a bit of an angle, I'm using a combination of the surface tension of the material, as well as gravity, to create myself a nice kind of sculpt, beveled surface. Now there are times when you'd want to actually carve into your wax and actually kind of have it, you know, the, the tip of your gate actually be more of a more of a funnel before right before it hits the pattern to help you know give it that last little extra oomph of uh, speed. Every time we a fluid goes from a, a large volume to a smaller, you know, in this situation from the cup to a big gate to a smaller gate into the pattern, it's going to the velocity of the metal is going to increase. And so and ultimately it's based on fluid dynamics. And so that ability, it, we can you know, control that. And so when we get around to certain detail, certain you know, thinner thicknesses in our pattern, we can step down our gating just enough to really get that metal so it's just squirting into the pattern and giving us that extra detail or that extra distance uh, between gates through a thinner mass. Okay, so as that's solidified, and cooled a little bit. I'm gonna go back, heat up my tool again. And again, just like welding metal, as I, as this cools, again, this is all molten wax now, but as I cool, now it's gonna contract and it's potentially gonna pull your gate towards the weld. And if you're not careful, you can move your system around. So that's why I want to jump from one side to the opposite side and back and forth, methodically working my way around. Now working on any one wax is a challenge because you're, again, your, your instinct, you're going to get impatient and you're going to want to work the wax faster than you, than it's going to want to allow. And again, we want to be careful on just how much heat we're applying to the surface. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this off to the side, let it you know thoroughly cool down. And so this is where it's like when if you're, ideally if you're sprewing multiple things, then you can set it off the side, work on the next piece, work on the next piece, and by the time you get back, back to this, it'll be cooled down. Uh, one of the, if you're only doing a singular object, it's worth just kind of stepping aside, scraping off the table, doing a little bit of cleanup in your shop, and giving this a chance to do its thing as far as cooling down. So in this situation, we're gonna kind of just set it off to the side and wait for that moment. And again, depending on the temperature of your, ambient temperature of your room, you know, that could be five or 10 minutes. So just like the handy cooking show, already got one ready. So this is nice and cool. So now we're, we're ready to attach it to the cup itself. So same kind of thing. I'm going to, you know, heat up my gate a little bit, let that heat start kind of absorbing into it. And heat up the cup. Same kind of thing. Now for this gating system, I'm going to put the gate right in the middle of the cup. And I'm not so much worried about the cup being, or the gate being totally vertical to the cup. I'm more, more interested in this actually balancing. So depending on what the orientation of the gate wound up being attached to the skull. So I'm actually kind of tilting it back just a little bit because of the, where the center of gravity is in this situation. Now what I'm gonna do it's because I'm actually going from gate to cup and not my pattern. I am going to use the electric soldering iron. I'm just going to plunge that directly straight in two times and basically creating a tack weld, a couple of series of tack welds, creating equal amounts of molten material from the, from the two parts, the cup, the cup and the gate. And then as they solidify, it's basically going to fuse those areas into one, one material. And I'm going to jump around to the other side. So 
instead of just trying to sit there and balance the pattern, I'm ultimately just going to wind up, you know, slightly doing micro movements and it's going to weaken and kind of break that wax. So the, as soon as that surface solidified enough that it's not going to drip, I flipped it around. So at this point I've welded on two sides of the gate. I'm going to let that cool down. And so now that that's had a chance to solidify and I've gone back in and welded all the way around this. And so we have a nice strong connection here. And one of the reasons what we want to do, we really want to make sure that we have good strong connections in our spruce system. Because as we get into the actual dipping, we're going to be handling this almost primarily by the rim of the, by the cup itself. So for this completed system, as I'm going in and out of the slurry tank, and so one of the things about the ceramic, the ceramic shell is that it's water and silica flour floating in it. So it's water-based. This is an oil-based wax. Oil is buoyant in water, meaning that this is going to want to float. So if we're only holding on to this the cup and we plunge this into a giant vat of liquid material, this is going to want to float and could potentially, if your welds aren't strong enough at your where it's connected to the pattern, up at the cup and the vents, it'll just pull your spruce system apart. And so you need to be able to, you know, move your, you know, your spruce system around pretty aggressively as it's, you know, getting heavier and heavier. Now, ultimately, once you get into the third or fourth coat of slurry, you're, it's going to add extra strength to it. But, it, but until that point, everything needs to be able to be handled and manipulated spun around repeatedly without it just snapping off. So what, that's one, part of the reason we want to make sure everything is nice and strong. Now that things are solidified enough down to the cup, we're going to reinforce that a little bit. So I'm taking some of my wax that we cooled down earlier. It's been just kind of hiding under the wax pot and the table, which is a nice way to kind of keep things soft and malleable. So I'm just going to make, turn this into a coil. Probably about a half inch in diameter. And I'm going to press it into creating a little bit of a funnel and even transition between the gate and the bottom of the cup. And I'm just going to kind of feather it in. And again, we'll let that cool down. So one of the things we want to, as we're doing our spruce system, we really want to be mindful of preventing or at least cleaning up any drips, heavy texture. Because one of the things we want to do as the metal is flowing into our investment, if it's a rough surface, it's going to create turbulence. Much the same way as um, if you're looking at a stream or a river, if it has a muddy bottom, nice and smooth, it's, everything's going to flow, you know, almost look like it's not even moving. It's just gonna, everything's gonna be super slick going down the, you know, down the countryside. If it's, meanwhile, if it's a heavy rocky bottom, you're gonna see a lot of white water and turbulence. And so the same effect will occur in your investment casting. So the smoother and the prettier, you know, that you can make your spruce system, the more efficient it's gonna work. Um, and ultimately in the end, give us a better, better result. Also, if nothing else, it's just good craftsmanship. And so, you know, you don't want to just always get into the mindset of, you know, I just want to get it done. It's like, well, no one's going to see that part of the process. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. I could be sloppy at that point and stuff like that. You'll, it'll benefit you more if you can maintain your level of craftsmanship through the entirety of your process. And so that way, as you move in and out, and you know, whether you're doing process or the actual, actual crafting of your pattern, you're in that flow and, and your, your, your techniques are just tight right from the get-go. And so it's not a matter of you know, flipping on a light switch and being like, oh, I'm gonna be neat now or sloppy then or getting into a weird rhythm and just being sloppy all the time. So when in doubt, be mindful of your process, be mindful of your craftsmanship and your details and be consistent. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna take, so I actually have two soldering irons I have one that has kind of the tip that came with it, although I kind of, you know, sharpened it or kind of dulled it down so it's just a small radius, eighth inch tip. But then I also, on that another torch, I took the tip off 
and round it out the kind of big barrel of it. And so that gives me a little bit, you know, because I want to use this lower part of the torch. It just creates a little bit more versatility, especially when, when it comes to gating. And again, I'll leave links uh, down below for all these tools that I like to use. So what I'm doing is I'm melting just the surface, but I'm letting it, the surface solidify before I rotate the wax. So it doesn't just create more additional drips. And ultimately creating that kind of initial nice funnel. But I also didn't just taper this thing down you know, is it is a big funnel right into it. I still wanted to catch, create enough of a lift underneath the cup so when I go to hang it, the tongs have a, have a nice resting spot. Okay, so now that we have our gate attached to the pattern and a nice strong connection to our cup, our next step is the vent. And so, yeah, you can see where, because the, I, I just threw all this heat at it, everything is nice, getting kind of soft here and stuff. So I'm actually gonna let this sit off to the side for a few minutes, cool down, and then we'll come back to this. Now, now that we've given this a chance to cool, we have a nice strong connection. And so what I'm gonna do is I wanna add the vent. A lot of times with venting, if you have a specific high point somewhere in your casting, you wanna vent off of it and bring it up. In this situation, I really don't have any high points. That, so what, what I'm gonna do is actually attach the vent to one of the lower points. So as I get a, so I get a complete compression. As the metal flows in down the gates through the pattern, it pushes out to the end point and then we'll push the gases back up to the rim of the cup. That way the gases aren't intermixing with the metal as it's flowing into your pattern. and doesn't impede that process. So what we're gonna do is, and so to help also facilitate, again, stepping back into, you know, looking into the future, the next step of the ceramic shell, is that I want to create situations where the material is gonna dry evenly. The material itself is gonna go through 10 layers, 10 different steps of drying. And so we want things to be nice and even, nice and strong. And so if I attach my vent, and it's at a really steep angle. It's going to dry evenly up at the top, but it's going to dry slower where it's in a more acute angle. So what I'm going to start off with is just bending the tip of my vent material. And so when I go to weld this thing on, it's going to be more perpendicular to the cup. And then I'm going to come up here, kind of roughly measure for my overall length. So again, I'm going to, to do a weld. We're gonna weld two different ends of this. So heat up both those ends, let them cool down, just you know, start letting that heat. So heating up the ends of the wax, also then heating up aspects of the pattern or the points of contact at the on the pattern and the gate. So that heat has a chance to absorb and give us a nice kind of sticky point. And so I'm just going to press that up into it and then up against the cup. And then for this weld, even though I'm on the, even though I'm going against the pattern, it's on the inside. So I'm going to take advantage of being able to use my soldering iron. welds chill so they don't drip. And then the same for up at the vent. Okay, so there you have it. We've completed our sprue system, our direct sprue system for this wax skull. And so as we said, we have our gate, our, our pour cup, our gate, our vent. We have our nice flat bottom. It's all set up and so it'll balance nicely um, in the next step, which is ceramic shell. 
And so I've been alluding to the ceramic shell process. And so I'm really looking forward to getting into that content. Um, it's going to be probably at least two, maybe three videos, really kind of diving into not only the application for this specific pattern, but the, you know, the, the mixing, the maintenance, um, the different aspects that go into, into that, some different uh, kind of slurry mixes uh, that will, are both beneficial in a commercial foundry, but also for the one person caster, the small scale shop. You know, one of the things I'm not sure if I've really mentioned is that, yes, I run a foundry here in Chicago, and occasionally I have assistance and everything, but majority of the time, I'm, the, I'm, I'm doing all the work by myself and, and adjusting my tricks and my approaches uh, to my process to facilitate the, the, the one-man shop. And so, as always, if you're, you know, if you got something from this video, you know, certainly hit the like button. If you're digging the overall content of the videos, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And also, if you have any suggestions or, or if there's some subject matters you'd like me to cover, comment below and um, I'll see what I can do for you. And until the next video, be creative and be safe.